So hello, I'm, uh, I'm Charles. Uh, I'm pleased to be here. Thanks for the invitation. So I'm the co-founder of this company, uh, Euritech. Euritech in French is a Parisian-based uh, company. Uh, and I'm also, my background is uh, mathematics, computer science. I did a PhD in machine learning. And I'm also today a lecturer in, uh, in deep learning. So I'll be getting into some, a few uh, technical details uh, today. But before, what is Euritech? Uh, then a few technical details about uh, detecting uh, trends, you'll see. And if we have time, but I'm not sure, uh, I'll dive into color identification. So here Tech, we are basically forecasting consumer trends. Uh, we are doing it mostly for the fashion and luxury uh, industries, even though we've already uh, worked with beauty and other <coughs> companies as well. So today, it's not really up to date. We're a six-year-old company. We're more like 40, and we just completed our Series A. So what is actually uh, computing trends for? Well, for brands, because we sell directly to brands, it's if you don't understand very precisely what are the dynamics of the trends, especially in fashion, you will obviously miss a lot of revenue. For instance, if you're a luxury brand and you miss completely a, a big trend, you will uh, be uh, getting very, a lot of um, uh, missed revenue. But also, if you can't predict very well, for instance, if you're just using past data, maybe last year's data, to predict uh, this year's uh, amount of products you need to, to have in your catalog and, and the quantities in that or that place, you will have some overstock, some, uh, um, a lot of uh, products that actually do, are not really uh, uh, well aligned with the current trends that uh, you will have to somehow, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, destroy or uh, have into, uh, into stocks. And obviously, if you're, a, if you're a brand and you have an image to keep, you want to be ahead of the trend and not uh, uh, behind. So that's why we're predicting <coughs> trends. So what is actually a trend? In our case, a trend, we will capture it from social media. You can think of uh, Instagram, Weibo, plenty of other uh, social media, where does the, the consumer preference are shown. Influencers uh, uh, are, take up some uh, very early signals uh, from the market and, and then uh, produce a massive number of, uh, in, uh, of posts, of shares. And then the voice of customers, every other, uh, get these signals and, and again propagate this trend through time. So you can see that there's different types of population that will uh, propagate the, the trend through, through time. So we decided that we would uh, take the signal as much as we can ahead in time. And in particular, if we want to be uh, in fashion, we need to go and look for trends in, on Instagram. Instagram is, is our main source of data today. We have uh, others. But if you go to Instagram and you use classic uh, social monitoring tools, you will only be able to understand what's uh, within the keywords. Uh, the, the hashtags, the, the keywords, the comments, or something like that. But the, the on, you will only see a very, very little part of the story there for uh, consumer products, for fashion, for beauty, for luxury. Most of the important signal is actually in the image. And we did some analysis on um, uh, millions of posts and uh, people that are the most uh, influential, they actually don't uh, put the kind of uh, keywords of what they wear uh, within the text, and it's only based in the, in the image. Plus, as we are very uh, international in the input data, if we were into keywords, we would have to have, uh, do a lot of uh, language, uh, go through language problems, etc. With the image, obviously, it's uh, much easier. When I say image, it will always be image or video. Uh, it's uh, almost the same for us. So the goal here is to capture from uh, a lot of uh, data. So on the, on the left, uh, upper left, we uh, detect, um, we gather and crawl plenty of data. Uh, today we are around 3 million per day. Understand these images. So what I mean by understanding the, understanding the images is characterizing very precisely the aspects of fashion, for instance. It could be the different products, it could be the textures, the colors, the shapes. 
plenty of, I, I will go, uh, I will dive deep on, the, on this one. Once we are able to understand the dynamics of this characteristic or of this product, we can forecast what will be in the next year the dynamics of, I don't know, for instance, the uh, leopard uh, skirt. And this uh, will enable us to uh, give insights to brands through a platform that we've built. So we sell directly a platform to brands and to, to users that are not uh, really aware of machine learning and just want the insights to uh, build better collections, build better products, etc., take better decisions. So we'll focus today on the vision technology. So the difficulty here, you will see, is that we are uh, detecting things in the wild. In the wild means that we can have any types of images as input. It's very different from uh, other computer vision uh, uh, use case that you've seen, where the input data is very well characterized. It, you can fit it within a standard data set. You have pictures with always the similar kind of uh, uh, input, maybe a white background if it's an uh, e-commerce product. No, in our case, it's user-based data, so it could be anything. And this makes the problem really, really different. And I will show you why. So first, what do we want? We want to detect some generic attributes. Maybe there's a top, pants, uh, shoes, etc. And to dive deep into these attributes. What are the colors? What are the shapes? What are the patterns? Uh, and even in some cases where it's uh, iconic products, what are the exact products? And here we can identify the different uh, brands, the different uh, even models of the bags and the shoes, etc. So you could think of it as a standard classification problem. Uh, you have a, an input image, and as output, you will want several uh, characteristics or products from that, from that image. But it's a bit more complicated. What we actually do is a whole pipeline of models that we run through all the images that we crawl. So starting from the picture on the left, we first run a detection step, which will uh, crop the image into small pieces, uh, which are all the different uh, things that we are interested in. And then from each of the pieces, for instance the handbag, we will apply several other models, um, for instance to segment the model, to get the color, to get the, some attributes, to get the fabric, etc., etc. You have to think each of these is a, is a deep learning model and uh, was trained already. And we have 20, uh, around 20 different models that run through all the different images that we have. And if you followed the talks uh, this morning, uh, the way we orchestrate all that is very, uh, very similar. Uh, we use uh, uh, containerization in Docker's, uh, Kubernetes to deploy them, and we have a whole pipeline that goes through all the, the images. Well, let's focus on the first part, because the first part is actually the most difficult one. Why? Because we could have uh, fashion images as input, but we could have anything because we don't control what the people post on, the, on social media. So if we focus on, on this part, let's look at it. Uh, to do detection, usually we use uh, uh, standard models like uh, FastRCNN, or you could find some on uh, web uh, APIs or Google pre-trained models. Uh, or you, if you want to build it, you can use um, Typically, uh, standard data sets. There's one even on fashion that are open source. And if you train your model on uh, fashion images, it works well. And when you test it at test time, you will have pretty good performances. So you will be able, you can't see it uh, very clearly, but you will be able to detect quite uh, precisely uh, pictures here, the, the types of clothes. In the last one, it's a bit more difficult. It's already, it's missing a few things. But in practice, we also have images like that. So what should your fashion detector see here? It will see a dress and a skirt. And in that case, a hat and a dress. <laughs> and it's, it's pretty uh, normal because it has never seen uh, fire hydrants before. So obviously, uh, it just has to make some prediction as if it was within the fashion dat data set. And it's uh, actually a big problem because we can't really control what are the inputs, so we will have this and we will make some false predictions. 
So what we would like to do is kind of try to understand general concepts uh, of objects to be able to remove these, uh, these errors. For instance, if we could learn what is a fire hydrant, probably we wouldn't predict uh, a dress and a skirt on it. So what we, we, uh, we did, and we wrote a, a paper on it, is to use other data sets that we are not really interested in, for instance, the standard COCO data set, and to transfer the knowledge in order to better understand background objects. And so we did that. So how it goes is that we can use uh, another data set. The problem is it's complicated to, to merge data set for, uh, for uh, this kind of algorithm. So we have to do what we call uh, self-training. So we first train the first detector, and when we predict uh, with this first detector on the other data set, so the fashion detector predicts on uh, Coco images and the Coco detector predicts on fashion images. And this generates a much, much more uh, complete data set at the end, which we can use to then build uh, a, a much better no uh, model. So there's plenty of details that makes it possible. It's not uh, possible out of the box. You have to change some, uh, some uh, parameters, some losses, etc. But I won't go into the details. I will just show you the final uh, predictions that uh, goes after that, from this to this. So what we have uh, at the right, it detects correctly the bottles, the bowl, etc. But it's not really that that we are interested in. It's just that it doesn't detect anymore a dress and a skirt. Our, f our uh, final detector is able to detect much, much more, uh, many more uh, classes, but we are, only we are only interested in a, in a subset of them. But the thing is, it's now much better at understanding the background and the garbage, uh, things that we don't want to predict on. And for this one, the same. Now it knows what a fire hydrant is. So this is the, the, the basis of our system, and it enabled us to remove many, many different uh, uh, wrong pre predictions. <coughs> and it enables also us to increase the scope of our detection very easily without having to re-tag everything to rebuild the whole data set from, from scratch. And this is a problem you often get uh, in, uh, in detection, where if you haven't defined your classes uh, well at first, then you have to redo everything, redo all the whole labeling, because you, you have new classes. So in our case, we can add very easily some uh, new classes. So I have plenty of other things about color which is a much more difficult uh, problem that you would think of, but I will, I will I think, uh, pass it to, uh, to, f to finish uh, on that. If you're interested, I'll show you that later. So thank you very much. Uh, feel free to uh, contact me, and if you're interested in both the more science-y side, there's some, uh, a few papers that we, we've um, written, <coughs> or on the business side, I'm also here to, uh, to discuss. Thank you.